Okay. Okay, it's uh, two o'clock. Uh, welcome everyone to our uh, public meeting for our development charges uh, bylaw update. Um, we will be uh, going through a some formalities and then a presentation and then we will have uh, an opportunity for if you're watching a member of the public watching to ask questions, uh, make comments, etc. And uh, that really is all we have on our agenda for today's meeting because it is a special meeting for this purpose only. So with that said, uh, we'll first adopt the agenda. I have a recommendation here that the agenda of the February 10th, 2022 special meeting of council be accepted and passed. Could I get a mover and a seconder for that? I'm going to need both of you, Lisa and Dan. <laughs> Moved by Lisa, seconded by Dan. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And then we'll deal with the disclosure of pecuniary interest with regard to today's agenda. I have nothing to declare. Councillor Yake? No. Councillor Hearn? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Next up, we have our presentation. Uh, we have John Murphy and Derek Ali uh, from DFA Infrastructure International to give us a rundown on uh, our proposed development charges uh, study and uh, which will translate into a bylaw for the future. So welcome gentlemen, and I'll pass the floor over to you for the presentation. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council and staff and public. Uh, I just want to confirm that uh, you're looking at the presentation or is it, uh, is that, you tell me? It's good. It's good. Okay, let me just put it right here. Okay. All right. So um, this is the uh, public meeting that is required under the Development Charges Act in respect to passing the Development Charge Bylaw. Um, we are going to uh, go over a few things today. One is to uh, provide a background on development charges, uh, present the draft uh, study and bylaw, and um, obtain feedback from the public should there be any uh, individuals that are interested in, in commenting. Hey John, um, can, I, can I interrupt for a sec? Um, sure. We are seeing a report on the screen, not the presentation. Okay, All right, let me just pull this yeah. over. Yeah. What that's, do you see? Yep. That's okay. Yep. Okay. So it's my secondary screen that I was trying to get. All right. So I'm going to be looking away over at the screen as opposed to looking at you. Um, so uh, everyone has pretty much seen this presentation before when we had the meeting in November to review the draft background study and bylaw. Uh, so we're going to go over it again um, for the benefit of the public. Uh, so uh, development charges are fees levied against uh, development uh, to recover the uh, net capital cost uh, that's required to service new growth. Uh, the principles behind development charges are growth should pay for growth. Uh, now, what's important to note is development charges do not pay for the operating cost of the, the assets that are uh, uh, funded through development charges. Um, uh, development charges do not pay for the local services uh, within um, say a subdivision, those are paid by the developers and uh, the development charges do not pay for the replacement of those assets um, that are required to service new growth. Um, municipalities or the authority, uh, the municipalities are given the authority under the Development Charges Act to impose fees on new development. On new development. Uh, now to Im impose development charges, a municipality must prepare a background study, uh, hold at least a, one public meeting, which we're doing uh, today, and pass a development charge bylaw. Now, these bylaws are valid for five years. And you, as you'll note on the screen, your current bylaw does not expire until uh, June 16th, 2023. Uh, the reason why we're undertaking this exercise now is because there were uh, changes to Development Charges Act that requires development charge bylaws to be amended to reflect uh, the new legislation by September 18th, 2022. Um, now, these uh, amendments, the, the, the changes to the legislation, one was to remove uh, what is called a statutory 10% reduction on certain uh, 
costs for certain services. Um, there were changes to the statutory exemptions that are contained within the Development Charges Act and regulations. And now there is um, uh, the ability to defer payments on certain types of developments, which require, well, which would, um, which interest would be uh, charged against the deferred payments. Now, those types of developments are uh, rental housing that is not nonprofit and institutional. Now they can uh, pay over a six year period and uh, nonprofit housing uh, has the option to pay over 21, uh, well, it's really 20 years. So those, those are uh, new, are, um, new uh, requirements or provisions in the Development Charges Act. And really it's to promote uh, the creation of affordable housing. Uh, now, one thing you wanted to note at the bottom is the township currently has a policy in regards to these deferred payments. Um, now the interest on the outstanding development charge amounts, so I guess you have, there's a policy on that interest. Uh, right now it's currently 3.4% and it's based on the average annual historical five-year Stats Canada uh, non-residential building construction price index. Uh, so in regards to the uh, draft uh, background study, um, the main components are the growth forecast, the uh, historical service levels, which there's a requirement for certain types of services to be um, that limit the amount of development charges to be collected based on the average historical service level over the last 10 years. So when we calculate the net capital cost for those services, and they're typically soft services, uh, that capital cost that you would impose on new anticipated development cannot exceed the um, service level cap, which is calculated uh, as part of this process. Um, of course, there's the growth capital program that uh, will be presented here today and any policies that uh, the council would like to see contained within the development charge bylaw. So the services that Wellington North uh, includes within their uh, development charge bylaw are administrative services, which are studies, uh, roads and related, uh, park services, uh, bylaw enforcement, that's, that's a new service we're including this year which is allowed under the, the amended Development Charges Act, uh, recreational services, fire protection services, water services, and wastewater services. Um, so as we said, the three components are the growth, anticipated growth, the service level cap, and the capital program. So what we're gonna do is review the uh, projected growth. Um, as you can see, uh, over the next 10 years, the township is looking at around 2,300 uh, new um, residents between 2031 to 2041, or, or sorry, let me go back. It's 2100 new residents over the next 10 years and over to 2041, which we call build out, is about 4,400 new residents. So when we convert that, or when we look at the number of dwelling units over the next 10 years, uh, the township is looking at around um, 800 new dwelling units and around 1,650 out to 2041. So we also look at um, the growth within the urban area. Now that is, is the growth that will be serviced by sewer and water. And we had to uh, provide that, that um, growth value to calculate the sewer and water development charge rates. Now, when we look at um, the non-residential charge, we look at employment growth. And over the next 10 years, we're looking at around 867 new employees. And out to build out to 2041, we're looking at around 1,459 new employees. Now that's converted to a square footage based on the uh, square foot per employee, based on the type of non-residential non -residential development, whether it's commercial, industrial, or institutional. And you can see the footnote at the bottom uh, when calculating that square footage and those factors that are applied. So over the next 10 years, the township is looking around 700,000 new square feet of non-residential development and around uh, 1.2 million over the next 21 years. 
And again, we look at the amount of new uh, non-residential development and employment growth within the urban area. And as I said, that is required to calculate the sewer and water development charges because it's only those um, services are only applied to the serviced lands. So this is the historical service level uh, on a per capita basis that we calculated. Um, now you can see the types of services, the parks, rec, by law enforcement, fire protection and roads and related. Um, now, one thing that should be noted is that this cap does not impact on the township's development charges because the capital program that is being, the net capital program that is being presented does not exceed this cap on a per capita basis. So we're now looking at the capital costs for each service. Now, uh, this slide presents the gross capital costs. This is the entire cost of the project, which um, contains components which will benefit the current population and employment. And we'll get into that in a bit, but you're looking at around $68.6 .6 million in capital costs over, now, as you can see on the, uh, the far, right column, the, the uh, term, the, uh, the duration of that capital program. So for the soft services, uh, it's a 10 year period. And for the roads, water and wastewater, we're able to look out to build out to 2041. So as I said, the gross capital cost is 68.6 .6 million. But from that, we have to deduct uh, a number of items. One is where there is expected to be uh, grants or, or uh, funding from other, other entities or, or senior levels of government, that has to be deducted, as well as there has to be an estimate of the uh, project or the portion of the project that would benefit the current or existing uh, population, um, residential employment population, that has to be deducted because it's only growth related component that uh, development charges um, can fund. Now, what also has to be deducted are those adjustments and those adjustments are the reserve balances. So it's like a, a pre-collection of development charges. So when you're calculating the net costs that is allowed to be recovered from development charges, you have to deduct what you have in, in the reserves or in the bank. So we also, the next step is to allocate, and I'll, I'm gonna go back to that slide. So we, we started off with 68.6 .6 million in gross capital costs, but of that only 32.8 would be considered growth related and therefore eligible for recovery from anticipated growth. Now that 32.8 million is then allocated between residential and non-residential growth. And that is determined based on, uh, for most services, the it's just the allocation based on the percentage of population versus employment growth. Now for some services like parks and rec, they mainly or mostly benefit uh, residential uh, development or residential growth and, and, and not um, uh, non-residential, but we cited on the, uh, on the side of, well, we felt there, there we could probably allocate a, a small portion and we did it 5%. So that's in keeping with the last study. So I was asked to put in um, the capital programs for each of the services. So uh, as you can see, we'll go through um, each of the services here. Uh, so this is the uh, administrative services, the studies. Uh, as you can see, the gross capital cost for services are 175,000, but that is brought down uh, to 86,000, which can be um, recovered through future growth through development charges. Uh, in regards to park services, we're looking at uh, 2.1 million or 2.2 million in gross capital costs. And that gets reduced down to 472,000, which can be recovered from future growth. Uh, recreational services, 4.1 million in gross capital costs. That's being brought down to 1.1 uh, 1 million. And fire protection, uh, we're looking at 2.1 million. That's brought down to uh, about 600,000. 
Now this is the uh, the new service and it's by law enforcement. I believe it's a vehicle and I think it's a shared vehicle. So uh, I think the original cost was 30,000, but only 10,000 was allocated to um, by law enforcement. And because that, that uh, vehicle will benefit both current and future growth, um, the net cost to be recovered from future growth is uh, $1,300. Now we get into the larger programs, the hard services uh, roads. We're looking at the uh, 16.6 million gross capital costs, which is brought down to 4.6 million after the deductions. Um, water services, 18 million in gross capital costs brought down to 6.5 million. That can be recovered from anticipated future growth. And wastewater services, uh, the gross capital program is 25.5 million, and that's brought down to to approximately 20 million um, that can be recovered from future growth. So what happens is the residential component of the net capital cost gets divided by the anticipated growth to arrive at an anticipated residential growth to arrive at a, a cost per capita on a service by service basis. So we're looking at around six, $6,100 per um, residential population growth per capita. Uh, on the non-residential side, the charge is on a per square foot basis is, and it's $7.07. .07. But in regards to the residential rate, that gets uh, converted based on the dwelling type because development charges are, are charged, residential development charges are charged based on the dwelling type. And the factor to determine that charge by dwelling type is the uh, occupancy rate or the, the PPU. And these are the factors that were used in the previous study and used by the county in calculation of their development charges. Um, obviously, it's, it makes sense that the single and semi-detached homes have a higher person PPU factor, whereas the small units have, uh, the small apartment units have the smallest. And when applying those PPU factors to the per capita residential development charge, we arrive at these uh, residential development charges per dwelling type. And the single and semi-detached charge, calculated charge is uh, 19,426. The large apartments are 12,605. The small apartments are 9,195 and the other multiples um, which would be row housing, anything that's not single and semi in an apartment would be $15,345 per unit. In regards to the non-residential charge, as we said, it's $7.07, .07, and that applies to commercial and institutional. Now, the bylaw currently has the provision where industrial um, development is charged a 50% of the commercial charge, and warehouses warehousing is charged 25% of the uh, commercial charge. Now for wind turbines, um, the wind turbine uh, is charged a fee based on the municipal wide single family development charge. And that's contained, the policy is contained within the current bylaw. So when we compare to the existing bylaws, what you have, you have a, in essence, a, a small increase in the charge but what, when you look at it uh, in, in greater depth, you see an increase in the municipal wide component of all the dwelling types, whereas you have a decrease in the sewer and water charge compared to the previous bylaw. But overall, the charges are going up for each of the residential dwelling types. Uh, now, when we look at the non-residential charges, you can see how the overall charge is going down, but what you have is an increase in the municipal wide charge offset by a decrease in the sewer and water charges. And you have again, an increase in the um, uh, wind turbine charge. And again, that's based on the municipal wide services for a single family dwelling. Now, when we compare to other 
municipalities in the vicinity uh, of Wellington North, you can see that the charges are, are not the highest, they're above average. But one thing this, the far right column shows is the total development charge that would be levied against the development within the township. That includes the countywide charge of $5,000. Now, if we looked at just the um, municipal or the lower tier charges, Wellington North would probably be on average, would be great in the average of all these comparators. Now, again, when you look at the different comparators, uh, you really have to be aware of the services and the service levels that are currently being provided. So it's, it's hard to really compare whether uh, the township's charges are excessive or um, inadequate because you don't really know what's going on in the other municipalities, whether they're discounted or not. But really what, what this uh, would show to a developer is what they would pay when it, uh, for development charges within each of those municipalities. Um, again, when looking at the non-residential charge on a per square foot basis, while the charges are higher than average, they're not the highest. And when you remove the um, county charge, uh, they become the township becomes closer to the average among those comparators. Now we're going to talk about policies. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the township currently has a policy whereby industrial uh, development is charged a rate at fifty percent of the commercial rate, and warehouse warehousing uh, is charged at a rate of 25% of the commercial development charge rate. Um, there's also um, uh, incentives for uh, building within the downtown core. And the current policy is um, a 10% reduction of the development charge payable for development occurring within the built boundary. And there's a 25% reduction of the development charges payable when a development occurs within the intensification corridor. Um, and here are the, here's the built boundary for um, Arthur. And the shaded area is the area that would benefit from uh, the reduction of the charge. And here's the built boundary for Mount Forest. And here's the central intensification corridor for Arthur and the central intensification corridor for Mount Forest. Um, now there's a further uh, incentive for the creation of um, purpose-built rentals. I, I, I classify it as affordable housing, but there's also an incentive by the township for the creation of new rental units. And there's a further 25% reduction um, for that, that type of development. So in regards to the next steps after today's meeting and subject to any comments received and discussion among council, um, it's anticipated that the uh, development charge will go, the development charge bylaw will go for approval at the February 22nd meeting of council with anticipation that the bylaw will be um, coming into force on April 1st. And there should be noted that there's an appeal period and that's 40 days after the um, the bylaw is approved, so that is calculated as April 3rd. So after April 3rd, you don't have to worry about anybody um, not liking the background study and bylaw. So we're open for questions. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> thanks, John. If you could stop sharing your screen and... Great, <clears throat> thank you. So, uh, Karen, do we have anybody from the public that wants to uh, make comments or ask questions? We have two people in the waiting room, uh, Mr. McKenzie and Hatfield. Uh, if either one of you would like to ask a question, if you could just raise your hand. <coughs> Getting no response. Okay. Oh, 
Yeah, well, hold on, I do. Uh, so I'm going to promote Hatfield into the meeting. Sometimes it works and sometimes, it, okay, she, she, he or she should be here. PJMS Hatfield has just joined us. Uh, your camera isn't on and you're on mute. There we go. Okay. Hi. Um, my question is related to the discounts that you're giving to the, the purpose-built rentals. So if I'm understanding currently, or the proposal is for the new development charges to be in the area of around $12,000 per unit for multi-res, does that reflect the 50% discount or is there 50% discount on top of that amount? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the, that would be, that's the charge that would be otherwise payable. If you build, build within the, the um, uh, central intensification court, if you build purpose built rentals within the, the central intensification corridor, the, the charge would be half of that. So the, the percentages, uh, those deductions are not reflected in the calculated charges as presented. Okay. And in the intensification, okay, I, I'll have to go back and look at that map because I wasn't quite sure. You flip through those maps pretty quick. So, could you just state your name? Could you just state your name and address just for our records, for our public meeting records? Sure. It's Patty Joe McClellan Shaw, and I'm at 695 Queen Street West in Mount Forest. Thank you. Adam, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mayor Lennox. Um, I have got some calculation sheets available that would show the proposed charge for what would be considered a, a sizable multi-res build uh, within multiple areas of the township, given the incentives that are currently in play. And if you'd like, I'm, I'm willing to share those now just to give everyone a bit of a feel in terms of what those incentives would look like calculated out um, for various aspects of the, the charge. Okay. And, and uh, just, uh, I don't know whether you have it at your disposal or not, Adam, but I think Patty Joe was kind of uh, wondering uh, where the in uh, central intensification corridor begins and ends uh, in terms of it. I know it's primarily around the main street, but it does include the areas beyond just main street frontage as well. Do you uh, have those maps at your disposal? We certainly can work to have those ready. Um, bear with me for one moment. First, I will just share the map of the Mount Forest Central Intensification Corridor. And bear with me for one moment, sorry. Should be seeing that now in terms of the Mount Forest Central Intensification Corridor. Hopefully that will respond to any questions. So it's basically the Main Street Corridor primarily back to the first street parallel to Main Street. Correct. With some slight alterations to that, but yes. And uh, 
if that's all right with everyone, I'll stop share on that and bring up the calculation sheets. So on this screen here, you'll see apartments, uh, two bedrooms plus in terms of outside the built boundary based on the calculated charge. Um, and then outside of the built boundary for a purpose built rental, inside the built boundary, inside the built boundary as purpose built rentals and uh, going on accordingly in the hopes that this will answer any questions. And the calculations being shown here is assuming a uh, 30 units within those each of those builds. And Patty, Joe, we can certainly share this with you so you don't have to try and uh, decipher it on screen. Um, yeah, it's just an information sheet that staff did up just to give us a, a sense of what the impacts would be in each of the different kind of areas for, for those type of builds. Okay, that would be terrific, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm, I think what I'm understanding is it's in a very narrow area within, if we just look at the town of Mount Forest, it's within a very narrow range that you would get the um, discount for development charges. If, if it's not within the anticipation, you're paying the full rates as published on this. If it's purpose-built rental, you're still getting the 25% reduction. It's the additional 25% reduction that only applies to the central intensification corridor. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. That's great. Okay. Thank you so much. And then, and, and also, Mr. Mayor, there's a 10% reduction if you build within the built boundary, which is farther out from the central intensification area. So if it's purpose built rental, there's either 25% deduction, 35% deduction, or 50% deduction, depending on where it's built. So it's a, it's a good incentive for purpose-built rentals. Okay. Did you have any other questions, Patty? Patty, Joe? Okay. Do we have any anyone else who wants to ask a question from the public, Karen? Uh, Peter's in the waiting room, but he hasn't raised his hand. So I'm going to say no. And just for clarification, we've had those discounts related to the purpose built rental in place in our previous version of the bylaw as well. So it's this, this is not brand new to us. It's just uh, the NITLA latest version. Okay. Well, if we don't have any other members of the public who would like to ask questions, why don't we uh, see if there's any members of council that would like to make any comments or ask any questions. I'm good, Mayor Lennox, and sorry I was a bit late. I had trouble uh, logging in this afternoon. It's okay, Steve, did you have a question? No, I'm good, thank you very much. A lot of information to take in, so uh, gotta digest it. Okay. So again, this, this is the uh, statutory public meeting required under the Development Charges Act to uh, enact a new bylaw. Um, if, if there's any further, uh, amendments that council wishes to make, uh, this is the sort of last chance at it. So, um, if, if anybody has anything they want to uh, have further discussion on, uh, would encourage you to now's the time. Okay. I would just also comment too, that, uh, we're doing this review ahead of the five-year deadline that was re required by the Development Charges Act that was brought on by some of the changes in provincial legislation. Um, a number of our comparators in the charts may not have gone through this uh, revision to this point, 
Uh, so there may be, uh, even though we may be above average at this point, a year from now or 18 months from now, we might not be as above average. Uh, I know that uh, Wellington County is going to be entering into a development charges review this year. And the, my expectation is that uh, those rates are not going to go down by a long shot. So uh, I think, I think uh, many municipalities will see their rates go up. I think we're very fortunate in that our rates are very stable from our past bylaw to the current version uh, in that it gives a uh, sort of a, uh, it, it gives a, a playing field that uh, anyone who wishes to invest in our community has, a, has some stability in what they're expected to pay today and into the future. And I think it addresses, uh, helps us address the capital needs to service the growth that we, we can see is coming our way so i think it's a uh, it's great that we can balance it that much and not have to pass along large increases in development charges any other questions or comments mike mayor Lanks, i would just make one comment as it relates to the the county development charges um we have had and are still pursuing conversations with the county around incentives uh, similar to what we have in our development charges uh, that it would further incent the attainable housing and the purpose-built rental um, or uh, reductions as it relates to industrial and commercial in a similar fashion that we've done. We'd like the county to at least consider uh, those type of incentives because yeah, the DCs uh, that the county charge are also charged to the same people that are working with us. So those, if we're trying to assent that type of activity across the county, it would be nice to have consistent incentives. So uh, our economic development officer, Dale, has been uh, uh, pushing those conversations with my support because, yeah, I think these are things that we've committed to uh, in Wellington North, and we'd like to see the county uh, commit to them as well. And just on that point too, Mike, I mean, it is a, su a subject we have had some discussion at. Uh, I sit on the county's attainable housing task force, and it has been part of the discussion. Uh, it hasn't reached the resolution point yet, uh, but uh, certainly I think the, it's on the table for discussion. Uh, Dan, go ahead. You're muted, Dan. Yeah, Andy, so in, in regards to that discussion, in regards to the incentives, has it just been, and I guess to Mike as well, has it just been us that have been asking for the possible incentives or has it kind of been a uh, every municipality in the, in the county, have they got together to kind of have this discussion? I guess I, I'll pass that on to Mike. Well, I think I can maybe answer part of it better than okay. Mike can. Sure. In that uh, we've been kind of the leader across the county in terms of incentivizing uh, things like purpose-built rental in particular. Okay. Uh, there is a, a widespread recognition that purpose-built rental is, is desperately needed across the county. Um, and those, this uh, attainable housing task force is really focused on how do we get things like rental housing built because our residents need it. Sure. Uh, so there hasn't been a request from across the other Wellington County municipalities because no one else has been doing it. We're, we've been the leaders in this. And I, I think uh, we're seeing far more interest and investment in this type of housing than we've seen in the past period, partly because of our incentives, I believe. So I think that makes a pretty good case for why the county may want to consider it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, then I have a recommendation here that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North receive for information the 2021 Development Charges Background Study and Bylaw Review presented by DFA Infrastructure International Inc. And further that staff be directed to bring the Development Charges Bylaw to a future meeting of council. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? 
I can move it, Andy. Moved by Steve, seconded by Dan. Karen, as I see you holding up your hand. Yeah, can you just, can we have a friendly amendment where you add a further clause and further that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign the bylaw? Okay, is that all right with the mover and seconder? I'm fine. Fine with me. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? That's carried. As amended, thank you. And I guess since this was the only purpose of our meeting today, we're all ready for the confirming bylaw. So I have a recommendation that the bylaw number 24-22 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Wellington North at its special meeting held on February 10th, 2022. Be ready first, second and third time and enacted. I uh, need a mover and a seconder for that, please. Moved by Lisa. Seconded by Dan. All those in favor? That's carried, thank you. And uh, thank you everyone, we're ready for adjournment. And the recommendation re reads that the special meeting of February 10th, 2022 be adjourned at 2.41 p.m. Uh, can I get a mover and a seconder please? Moved by Steve, seconded by Lisa. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. We are adjourned. I wish everyone a wonderful afternoon. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone.